Hello and welcome to Go Projects, a series of short videos showing you how to create small projects in Go in around 20 minutes or less. And in this project, we're going to learn how to convert markdown files into HTML. So I'm just going to create a new Go file here and I'm going to call this one md2html.go. Let's just write out the standard boilerplate. So we're going to do package main and we're going to do obviously our imports at the top. And let's just create out our function main. So we have everything ready to go. Now for this project, we're going to be using a package called go markdown. And if you haven't got that package already over in your terminal, you can just do a go get and then you want github.com forward slash go markdown forward slash markdown. Once you have that package on your system, obviously we need to import it into the project. So up in the imports, we can just call it. We're also going to need a few other things for this project from the standard library. We're going to want FMT. We're also going to want IO forward slash IO util. And finally, we want log. So the first thing we want to do is read in our markdown file. At the moment, we don't have one to work with. So let's create that first. So over in the root of the project, let's create a new file. And I'm just going to call this test.md. So I've just done a quick Google search here to find some example markdown. And I'll pop a link to this in the description. So I'm just going to copy this example markdown and paste it into our markdown file. Now, of course, you can use any markdown you want. So if you've already got markdown files, then feel free to use them instead of this boilerplate markdown. So back over in our project, the first thing we want to do is load in that file. So I'm just going to create a string first with that file name in it. So I'm going to call this file and I'm going to set that equal to test.md. So now we need to read in that file and I'm going to be using IOUtil read file for this and this returns us and this could return us two things. It could return us the content of the file or an error. So I'm going to do so I'm going to store the content of the file in a variable called content and then also a variable for an error if there is one returned. So I'm just going to call this read ERR. And then obviously we just need to call that IOUtil read file function and we just pass it in the file. And we just pass it in the path to the file which we have stored in our file variable. The first thing we want to do is just check there's no errors in our read error variable. And if there is, just log a fatal error and exit the program. So we can say if read error is not equal to nil, meaning there is something in there. We'll just do a log dot fatal f and we're using the formatted log here so we can print out the file name so it gives the user a bit more feedback. And then we'll just use percentage s as the placeholder and we just say file not found. So this will grab the contents of our file variable test.md the string and replace it into our placeholder. Okay, so if we've not got an error, the next thing we need to do is just actually convert the contents of that file into HTML. So I'm just going to create a variable here called HTML. And then we just need to call that markdown library. So we can do markdown and we can then call a function on it called to HTML. Now this can take in three variables if you want it to. So the first one is the content so this is the markdown content you want to convert into HTML. You can also pass it a custom parser and also a custom renderer. And for the purpose of this video, we're not going to be covering custom parsers or renderers. We're just going to be passing in the content. We'll just pass in the content here and then we can pass nil and nil. And again, if you've not seen my previous Go videos, I'm using GoLand and it puts annotations in on the functions, as you can see here, P and render. This text actually isn't in the file. This is just overlaid by my IDE. So you don't type these in, you just type nil and nil. Okay, so now let's just check whether this works. So we can just put the output of the two HTML conversion out to the command line. So let's try this. So we can do an FMT and we wanna do a print F for a formatted print. And now this requires a string. Now print F requires a string to output. 
At the moment, our HTML variable byte size. So we need to convert that to a string. That's easy enough and go. You just do a string and then pass in our HTML content. Now let's run this in the terminal. Let's see what we get. Over in our terminal, we just want to run our program now. So we can do a go run and then the name of our go file, which in my case is md2html.go. And then just hit enter. And you can see here now in the output, let me just expand this a bit. And you can see now in the output, the terminal, instead of markdown, this has been converted into HTML. Okay, that's good. We could copy and paste this into a HTML file, but it'd be better for the end user if we just created that HTML file for them. So back over in our project, let's create a HTML file. So I'm just going to create a new variable here called file out. And this is just going to hold the path to our outputted file. So I'm going to set this equal to test.html. Now we need to try and write this content out to the file. And we can use the IOUtil library again with a write file function. And this could return as an error. So let's catch that. So I'm just going to call this write error. And then we can call our IOUtil. And we call the write file function. Now this requires three parameters. It requires the name of the file that we're outputting the content and permissions. So obviously our file out is going to be test.html, which we've already put in a variable here. So we can just pass that in as the first parameter, file out. Next, we need to pass in the content. So we can just pass in the HTML content here. And then finally, permissions. And we're just going to set this to 0644. So this means users can read it, but they can't modify it. And then as a final bit of code, we can just check that this write error variable is empty. So the file has written correctly. So we can do that with an if write error is not equal to nil. So if there is an error stored in that variable, then we can just do a log fatal format again. And this time let's say could not write to, and then, then let's do our percent %s again. And we will put in the name of the file we tried to write with file out. So let's save this. Now that we're outputting to a file, we don't need to uh, output to the console anymore. So if we just remove this, and then let's just give the user some output just to let them know the program is finished. So after this if block, so if there is no write errors, it'll carry on down. I'm going to just do FMT. Let's do an FMT, and we'll do a print F, and we'll say HTML outputted to, and then we'll do a dollar sign S for our holder again. And we'll just give it that file out variable. So let's save this and run it in the terminal. We can run our program again with go run md to html.go. As you can see, it would have been better if we put a new line return there. But anyway, it's worked and it says HTML outputted to test.html. So I'll just give my folder a refresh here. We can now see the test.html file. So I'll just open this up in the IDE and you can see there's all the HTML tags. Let's take a look in the browser. And there we go, that's our HTML opened up in the browser. And we can see it's now converted that markdown file into our HTML.